This means one thing, electricity, the power of today and tomorrow. We warm by it, light by it, and use it in a score of ways in the home. And it's as safe as houses, providing we don't play the fool with it. Electricity is clean, efficient, and safe. Accidents can be avoided with care and common sense. Now, for a start, don't use equipment that ought to be in a museum. This sort of thing may seem all right to Grandpa Jones, but it doesn't make sense today. If you buy a house with this sort of old-fashioned wiring, get it properly rewired. It'll save this sort of nightmare, and it'll turn out to be cheaper in the long run. Ask about the possibility of extended payments. This is a much better way of going about it. Today, the modern house is nearly always wired with what is called a ring circuit. This circuit can supply any number of socket outlets and extra ones can be added as and when the need arises. A man like Bill Jones knows about living with electricity. He knows there are three main rules for safety. First, always buy equipment with the British Electrical Approvals Board label or made to a British standard. Secondly, see that it's properly maintained. If you think there's something wrong, it's SOS. Switch off straight away. Thirdly, send for a competent electrician. If in doubt, consult the local electricity board shop. They'll supply a list of the registered contractors in their districts. We usually start to know about magnetism and electricity at about the age of young Willie Jones. But not many of us take our knowledge very far. We don't have to. Jenny Jones is typical. She can wire up a plug, and she's familiar with the old color coding of flexes. Red for the live wire, black for the neutral, and green for the earth. But now, a new set of colours has been standardised throughout Europe for domestic appliances. Green and yellow stripes for the earth wire, brown for the live, and blue for the neutral. Both colour schemes will be in use in the home, so do learn them both. These modern plugs have their own fuses, and with care, they are simple to use. Now, when it comes to flexes, there's not really much to learn. Frayed flex should never be used. Replace it at once. Never try to join up flexes with insulating tape. Always have a single, unbroken length of wire. Not too long, no need for it to trail. And never use cracked or damaged plugs. The double socket is very valuable in the modern home. It gives more points and means fewer adapters. The 13 amp plug is the most widely used today. All these flat pin plugs are the same size and all terminal points are plainly marked. When wiring up, make sure the nuts or screws are hard down. This will make a firm connection. Two types of fuses only are used in these circuit plugs the brown and the blue, both carrying their British standard mark. The brown is used where the equipment is rated 700 watts or more. The blue 3 amp fuse is used for a lighter load like a record player. Remember always 
but always use the right fuse. Now, if you have to use an adapter, use a fused one. It's safer. But use as few of them as possible. Don't get back to one of those old Christmas tree arrangements with one connection sprouting out of another. Use double sockets. The ideal is a separate socket for every plug. Never unscrew the plate on a socket. And never put a two-pin plug in a three-pin socket. And when there are children, always use shuttered sockets or shrouded plugs. They're very much safer. The old-style fuse box. Grandpa Jones has known them pretty well all his life. These old-type fuses are easy enough to mend. First, switch off the supply. Find the broken fuse and take it out. Replace the old wire with a fresh piece. It must be of the correct gauge, of course. Don't pull it. Switch on and the job's done. Modern cartridge fuses are easy to replace. First, switch off at the main and remove the one that's blown. Spare cartridges should be kept there in the fuse holder on the main box for use at times like this. Always have spares handy. It saves a flap at the critical moment. Now, if the spare fuse holder is empty, Bill has to find one elsewhere. But in any case, the first thing to do is to make sure that the fuse works. He does this with a torch. It's quite simple. He uses the fuse to make contact between the battery and the casing. If the bulb lights, it's OK. And it does. So it's a good fuse. Into position, switch on, replace the cover, and Bob's your uncle. The modern storage heater is fully protected, but unless it's been specially designed, remember to stand it clear of the wall and not against other furniture. All radiant fires should have a permanent dress guard in front of them. This will automatically be a feature if there be ab approved and these symbols of guaranteed standards are of great importance. Now, if children are to be alone in a room, it's vital to fix a permanent guard even in front of a radiant fire. Remember to put portable fires where people can't trip over the flex. In a small room, fix the fire on a wall. Don't drape clothes over convectors. Always give them as much air as possible. Keep them clear of drapes and curtains, and remember, always switch off and unplug before cleaning a convector or radiant fire. Common sense, isn't it? Now, lighting's cheap and a well-lit house is a safer home. Remember that metal fittings must always be earthed and when changing a lamp, always switch off first. <coughs> Never touch it when it's hot. Lampshades. Don't put the shade down on the bulb. Use the shade ring on the lamp holder. Most new shades indicate the size of lamp that should be used. Don't try and put in a larger lamp. It risks setting fire to the shade. Better be safe than sorry. There's almost certain to be more electrical appliances in the kitchen than anywhere else in the house. Golden rule, never handle plugs or switches with wet hands. Now, always make sure the food mixer is dry before using it.
always unplug it before cleaning, which applies to all appliances. If the toaster gets jammed, switch off, unplug and remove the bread with care. Never poke about in it with a knife. There's even a right and a wrong way to fill an electric kettle. Always see the water covers the element and always see it switched off and unplugged before filling. And again before pouring out. Simple? Of course it's simple, even obvious. But such things make for safety. With all mechanical appliances, keep your hands away from all moving parts and always follow the manufacturer's instructions. When it comes to cookers, safety is again a matter of common sense. If there are children, see that the cooker is switched off when not in use and don't have youngsters around when dishing up the roast. Be careful when cooking in oil. The pan should never be left unattended and never be more than two-thirds full, including the food. And the utensil must fully cover the hot plate. Otherwise, there's a fire danger if the oil spills over. Fit two-way switches on stairs so you can light up and switch off comfortably and not have to go groping about in the dark. The bathroom should always be wired by an expert with no socket outlets and no portable appliances. All switches must be pull cord or, if wall pattern, must be fixed outside. Heaters must be out of reach of anyone in or near the bath. The only exception to all this is the shaver socket, which contains an isolating transformer. Get it properly installed and remember, it's for shavers only. These safety tips apply to all bathrooms, not just nice ones, but super Hollywood ones of the sort Jenny Jones may dream about. Ah, oh, well, there's no harm in dreaming of a golden bath. Except with the over-blanket type, always switch off the electric blanket before getting into bed. Make sure it's laid out flat, never creased. Follow the instructions. Don't stick pins in it. Have it serviced every two or three years and only buy a blanket with the BAB tag. Here's some points on other equipment. Never pull a vacuum cleaner by the cable. Get it serviced regularly. Make sure that the blades of fans are protected by wire guards and that the flex can't be caught up in the fan. When it comes to ironing, never coil the flex around the iron while it's hot. Steam irons should always be unplugged before refilling with distilled water. Back at his old home, Grandpa Jones reckons that the best and safest labour-saving tool for cutting the grass is a battery-driven mower. Keep the batteries on charge when they're not in use and they'll run all sorts of outdoor gadgets. Edge trimmers, hedge cutters and the like. No end to the uses a battery unit can be put to in the modern garden. Batteries for the mechanical jobs a waterproof main supply into the greenhouse. Inside and outside the house, electricity drives and heats the modern home. Bill Jones uses it for one of the latest lines in safe power tools. It's important that you should have a drill that is double insulated back to the power source. Yes, living with electricity is fun. Modern living is unthinkable without it, but it pays to be careful. According to ROSPA, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents, there are nearly 9,000 fatal accidents in the homes of Britain every year. Very few of them, of course, are caused by electricity. But remember, all of them, however caused, could be avoided with common sense and a little knowledge. So, remember the rules. Always buy equipment that's BAB approved or made to a British standard. And if in doubt when it's in use, switch off and call in a qualified electrician. It'll pay. <laughs>